Hello everybody, you are watching The Political Vigilante. We are all making Gotham great again. Ron Placone and I are doing the Progressive Comedy Tour November 2nd in Sacramento, November 3rd in San Francisco. We are just added November 4th in Santa Barbara. We'll have that ticket link up soon at GrahamElwood.com and also coming to Florida in January, January 9th. We're going to Gainesville January 11th. We're going to Orlando. We're working on the South Florida, Miami area the 12th and potentially maybe Tampa on the 10th. We're working on uh, some venues right now. So excited to be coming to Florida in January, Northern California in November. Um, this just came out about a week or so ago in the Associated Press. As aid checks go out, farmers worry bailout won't be enough. This is by Juliet Linderman of the Associated Press. Yes, you're reading that correctly. Trump is giving out a bunch of aid checks to farmers. Farmers across the U.S. will soon be begin receiving government checks as part of a billion-dollar bailout to buoy growers experiencing financial strain from President Donald Trump's trade disputes with China. Oh boy, where do we begin here? So Trump, you know, and all of his, mm, I'm number one, we're going to make America great. He's just, we're going to stick it to, to China. Well, China, guess what? They buy a lot of our produce and they have now put huge tariffs on it. So sales have gone down. So it's hurting farmers and farmers, many of them in the middle of the country, who many of them voted for Trump, are taking bailout. Now, my two questions are this. Are they now, do we, should we look down on them like welfare moms? <laughs> so many people on the right are always like, ah, your socialism and your bailouts and your free lunch and pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Should these farmers just pull themselves up by their bootstraps and stop taking a billion dollars that could go elsewhere? Or is this like, and if they go, well, well you, you want food on your table, right? You want to take care of people? Yeah, I do. I'm okay with some of these subsidies because I understand how important farming is. I also understand how important it is to have teachers that are well paid and free health care and people that are struggling financially. It's actually better to give them help than have them be susceptible to a life of crime or victims of crime or whatever. Oh, they're blights. They're just taking free handouts. No, we should be helping each other. We should stop. We have a, a nation of bullies. If you watch the Kavanaugh hearings, oh my God, they're just bullies. Dr. Ford is, is telling her story, which got to be harder than anything that I've ever seen in my life. And these, these old sen just bullies. We're a nation of bullies. It's what we do. We just bully everybody. So ask yourself, if you're a farmer or you're a Trump supporter, is this, do you, are you happy with this? Because here's some quote from some farmers. It's pretty obvious that the rural agriculture communities helped elect this administration, but the way things are going, I believe farmers are going to have to vote with their checkbook when it comes time, said Kevin Schoons, a corn and soybean grower from Arthur, North Dakota, and president of the National Corn Growers Association. Huh. Well, if you're critical of the Trump administration that you helped, are you a libtard snowflake? <laughs> This is what happens when you have someone in there that is only serving the corporate interests. I've said this before. Trump is just the most vulgar version of what presidents before him have done. This is what happens. And when the Democrats don't offer any alternatives, we could have a progressive in the White House right now who wouldn't be fighting with China and farmers would still be benefiting. I understand that these are very, some of these are very complicated issues that don't have simple solutions, but when you have a broken political system where a progressive is crushed by corruption and, and super delegates, then you have a guy like Trump that gets into office that, that does this, screws over farmers who voted for him. Farmers are already feeling the impact of Trump's trade tariffs with China and other countries. China has hit back hard, responding with its own set of tariffs on U.S. agricultural products and other goods. 
The Trump administration is providing up to $12 billion in emergency relief funds for American farmers, with roughly $6 billion in, initial, in the initial round. The three-pronged plan includes $4.7 billion in payments to corn, cotton, soybean, dairy, pork, and, s <laughs> and sorghum farmers. The rest is for developing new foreign markets for American-grown commodities and purchasing more than two dozen select products, including certain fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, meat, and dairy. $12 billion. I mean, developing new foreign markets? Okay. America is the richest country in the history of the world. We could be feeding the world rather than getting into a trade war with China. Now, I'm not an economist, and, and but this, is, this to me is when, you know, I remember seeing an interview with Noam Chomsky about when Obama became president after, you know, inheriting the financial meltdown from Bush. And Noam Chomsky said, you'd have thought that Obama would have then hired a bunch of like Nobel laureate economists to come in and solve the problem. No, he brought in the very people that created the problem. Like, when are we going to wake up to the fact that the two parties don't care about us at all? You voted for Trump, you're a farmer, he doesn't give a shit about you. He doesn't give a shit about you. I voted for Obama twice, he doesn't give a shit about me, he took my house. I don't give a, he doesn't give a shit. He let 5.2 million foreclosures happen. I mean, somewhere Monsanto's in this somewhere making a profit off of this, probably. Daniel Weiland worries the market downturn could be the death knell for his farm. Weiland 30 grows corn canola, and yellow peas on 900 acres of rented land near Hazen, North Dakota. He said he expects to reap about 30,000 bushels of corn and receive about $300 in aid. A penny a bushel on corn, it's not that it's entirely worthless, but it's almost is, he said. I don't know how many more years I can weather. It's, when corporations run your government, the will of the people is, re is, re is, is replaced. We have very little say. We have the Senate, two senators per state. So North Dakota, that has less people in it than the, you know, than the city of Los Angeles gets as many senators as the state of California, where that's where good ideas go to die, is what we say about the Senate. We've got the Federal Reserve that actually controls everything, which is not a federally mandated bank. It's a secret banking cartel. We've got wars that are being pushed by the defense contractors because it's good for their bottom line. And that's why they want us divided. If you're a Trump supporter watching this and you're like, oh, Graham, you left wing, wing nut, they're fucking you over just like they're fucking me over, man. <laughs> this guy, Daniel, I don't know this guy at all. Probably on paper, he and I don't have a lot in common, but you know what we do have in common? The government is screwing us over. Big government, big corporations. Google's screwing me over on YouTube. They have a big say in how this country's run, way more than I have, or Daniel has. Thanks for watching the show, you guys. Like, subscribe, push out the videos on your social media. All those numbers help. We're also showing on Daily Motion. Go to dailymotion.com slash Graham Elwood. You can watch the show there, and you can listen to it on iTunes. You are making Gotham great again.